right. Thank you. Uh, the big hand is a little bit past the 12, so we will call to order. Excuse me. We will call to order this planning board work session uh, April 20th, 2023. Uh, and are we ready over there? I just called the meeting to order, please. The meeting has been called to order. Thank you. <clears throat> Don't make me get angry. Don't make me use my teacher voice. Um, so uh, the agenda today uh, for the work session is to discuss the draft growth policy, public engagement plan, and digital engagement platform. So who is starting us off with that? Okay, Alan. Well, uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the planning board. Alan Tiefenbach, long range planner with the city of Whitefish. So this is to talk about Vision Whitefish 2045 Growth Policy Public Engagement Plan. I'll give you just a quick little background, first of all, on, um, on the growth policy. So it's required for a county or a city to adopt or amend a county or municipal code. Uh, it's an official public document. It's not a regulation, but it's uh, the community roadmap what the regulations are based on. And we're also, it's known as a master plan or a comprehensive plan. So in February, I came in front of the planning board and I presented an existing conditions report to you uh, as well as a timeline. And I presented this same thing to the council a couple of weeks later. Both of the decision-making bodies or the planning board and the council were pleased with the information that came in front of them, uh, but staff heard from the planning commission, from the city council as planning board, sorry, planning board, city council, uh, as well as some of the citizens in attendance, uh, the importance of making sure that the public was involved in the process. There were some questions about how public engagement should occur. Uh, that, that sent staff back kind of thinking about wondering if we needed to actually spend a little more time outlining exactly how that process was, would work so that we could let the citizens see it, so that we could bring it to the, the planning board and the council. Uh, we did some research on that and looking at what some other cities have been doing, different states, including here, uh, we are now proposing a public engagement plan. Uh, I looked at about 10 of them from different states and different counties, and I also looked at a few guides on how to do it, sort of a how-to booklet. And what we did in particular, we designed this to, to be as user-friendly and readable as we could do. We, uh, in general, you as the decision makers, you know the way the process works, but many citizens don't really come enough or aren't involved enough to know what does the planning board do? What does the city council do? What are all these terms that we use? So we wanted to make sure that this was something that was easily digestible that people could look at and didn't look too boring, if I can use that. I'm going to give you just a real quick breakdown. I'm going to just run you through. You, you've already had that in your staff report packet, but I'm going to talk a little bit about what this is, probably more also for the public, so they can sort of know how this thing is laid out. Alan, so, I'm just going to interrupt you for just a quick second. Yes, sir. Uh, on board members, this is, this is not a formal, it, this is a work session, so it's a little less formal. So if you have a question and you want to just break in, that's fine. We, the rules are a little more relaxed tonight. And I have a tendency to talk fast, so um, I don't even know I'm doing it. Feel free to tell me to slow down if you'd like to. So the first section of the plan, first couple of pages, is really what I'm calling the introduction section, and that talks about what the intent of this public engagement plan is. It talks about what is a growth policy, and it talks about what is a public engagement plan. It goes through what the roles of the decision makers, the committees, and the staff do. Uh, in particular, I think it was important to note that the city council, they're the governing, uh, governing authority, and they're the ones that adopt the growth policy, but under Montana statute, it's actually the planning board that are the ones that are authorized to prepare the growth policy. Uh, there's also, in this process, could be some advisory committees. Uh, we could know that as the community housing committee, for instance, and we may bring those in, th them into the process on some of these specific topics. And then there's city staff. And, and we're the ones that would be managing and facilitating this and drafting and reviewing all the documents, bringing the materials to the public, and we'll do what we can to use plain language and not a lot of plannerese, which we sometimes have a tendency to do. 
Uh, in this public engagement plan, we have uh, a table talking about who the people are that we're going to be trying to reach out to. Uh, I didn't go, uh, so I have the, the property owners, the business owners, the youth, renters, service workers. These are the, the, the actual people that live and work in Whitefish. Uh, we also have listed all of the community and the civic organizations that we'd at least like to let them know and talk to them about to know that they know that this is going on and, uh, and some of our government and our quasi-government agencies. So those again are shown in this plan. The, the plan goes through what the different opportunities for public participation is. Uh, so the, one, one of the, the biggies, and I'm going to sort of defer to this towards the end of the presentation, but one of the major tools that we're looking at is this Vision Whitefish 2045 website. The, the website that you see right now is kind of a placeholder. It's a, a very basic site that we put together just for now, uh, but we are looking at actually developing an engagement tool, which again I'll talk about shortly. There's also visioning workshops that we're looking at doing early on in the process. And these are where we work with the community to ask them things like, how do you envision traffic happening? What do you see Whitefish looking like in the next 20 years? What are the biggest challenges you see? And those are the, from those visioning sessions, those are the, the, the values that we begin to develop a master plan or a growth policy off of. Uh, there'll be, there's open houses. Um, those are generally when you bring in plans and you have different documents and it's sort of an open drop in, come out, come in and come out session where people can come and go at their convenience and give us feedback. Uh, there also will be town hall meetings. Uh, these are where town, where the staff directly uh, addresses the public. So we get up there, we present something, we talk about what it is. The public has a time to do question and answer. More than likely, uh, when we do our first kickoff meeting and go through the existing conditions, uh, uh, pretty much like what I showed you, uh, that would likely be a town hall meeting. Uh, we're also looking at doing presentations to civic groups so that we can interact with them. Uh, we'll actually be meeting, uh, the first one we'll be meeting with would be, um, uh, Flathead Families for Responsible Growth. We're meeting with them in May. Uh, we, we are certainly uh, offering for any, any civic organizations that want to talk to us or have them come talk to their organization or have a question and answer, we're certainly, walk, we're certainly happy to do that. There will also be a time to participate with public feedback during advisory committees, work sessions like this one tonight where the public will have a time to talk. Uh, any of the public meetings uh, where generally we'll present to the bodies and then there's a public comment. And also, we're, we're going to work at least on, a, on some virtual meetings, and more than likely, those will be like, probably what will happen is we will have visioning sessions, and then we'll offer that in a, in a virtual uh, method as well, so that people that either can't come or don't want to come or for whatever reason can't get here uh, can participate online. So far, so good? The public engagement plan goes through the different kinds of tools that we're going to use. Again, uh, the, the, one of the major ones is the website, which I'll talk about shortly. And I'm not going to bore you with all this, but you know, a few things I think to, to point out is um, email blasts. We'll be collecting emails from as many people that, that can sign up as possible, whether they sign up through our engagement site or people that have already sent me their emails. Uh, Any time that there is a new update to what's going on, I'm sending out these email blasts and letting people know something's new, Come, there's a public meeting. Um, one of the things we're looking at, we don't know if it'll work yet, is whether or not we could put announcements in utility bills. And there's a few reasons why that may not work, but most people don't even get them in the mail anymore. So, but what we have looked at is whether or not we can do some mailings where we can send out a flyer, you know, and, and we wouldn't do it every time, but I think it would certainly be prudent at the very beginning of the process to, to send out a net to as many people as possible about what this is. Yes, sir. Do we, uh, do we have a are we budgeting? Have we budgeted for that, or are you planning on budgeting for that in the next fiscal year? Because I know we're going through the budget right now in council. Yeah, I mean we have some money in the budget for <coughs> public outreach. We have some, you know cons consulting money in the budget, and we have some other monies available that we've set aside for this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, so I think in, in particular when the kickoff meeting happens, we'll really be casting a big net on that one just to let as many people know as possible that this is what's happening. This is how you get involved. Here's all the tools so we can get the word out there. I have, a fa I have a Facebook page listed there. The, the city has a Facebook page. Um, I don't know how many people use it. Uh, I think I showed we had some followers, but one thing in particular I think we're, we're looking at is what's called geotargeting. And you may have seen this when you're on Facebook and somehow suddenly an ad will show up for something that's happening nearby, like a concert or something like that. So we, there is the ability to advertise 
the growth policy on Facebook to people that live in the geographic area. Uh, we're doing a little research into that, but it certainly could be a, a helpful way to get people that may not be reading city agendas. Uh, flyers, um, again, you know, looking at civic events such as uh, the winter stroll. Uh, we're, we're looking at engaging with some of the teachers in the local schools uh, to see, and we've talked about whether or not this would work, whether we can get some, some students to be involved with some kind of project relating to the growth policy. I don't know what that's going to look like yet, uh, but I am going to reach out to a couple of the teachers at the high school and see if there's something they could recommend maybe getting the students involved with the growth policy. Uh, in the end of the growth policy, there is a table on there, the update phases and engagement methods, and I won't go through the whole thing, but what it does is it kind of tells you the different phases uh, that the growth policy is intended to work on. Uh, it goes through how long that is anticipated, which is an absolute estimate. I really don't know. It goes through what kind of tasks will be involved with those processes. And then most importantly, because this is what this is, it talks about the different ways in each one of those phases that the public can get involved. Where the meetings will be, how can they communicate with us, what are the ways so that they can be involved in that whole process. One thing I want to mention is we're, we're kind of in a holding period right now because as you know, Mr. Chair, there's a lot of current legislati legislation that's happening and some of it is directly <coughs> targeted at growth policies, which right now they're calling land use plans. Um, so we can talk about whether or not that's a good name. So there's a lot of pending legislation, and we're just kind of watching to see what happens. So we don't want to move forward too fast until we find out whether the city has to quickly fix our regulations or do something else in relation to what the legislators decide. So we're kind of just, it's a wait and see approach at this point. Okay, so a little bit about this website. Uh, we've spent a little research and we, we, uh, got, in, uh, con we got in touch with a vendor. Uh, you may have heard of them, they're called Granicus, and they offer a website called Engagement HQ. And what this is, it's, it's a little more than just a typical website. It's an online public participation platform. Say that three times really fast. And it's specifically intended for public engagement. Some of the things it does, and I want to go through it, but I'll give you some examples here in a minute is first of all, it operates like a typical website where you can get information through updates, newsletters, there'll be a calendar of upcoming events, video recordings, we could like post a recording of this tonight. The other thing though I think that's, that's more important is it directly, it lets the, the, the community directly engage. So there's a few different ways it, it can do this, and again I'll show you an example in a minute, but there's message boards where the public can come on and they can actually post a topic or post their ideas and then other citizens can read this and they can respond, which sometimes you have to be very careful about what those responses are, but these online discussions can actually happen or staff can post ideas and get feedback. Uh, some of the other things to do that I think will be super helpful are these online mapping widgets where there, you can have a map of a particular area and ask citizens to put pins in what is your favorite spot here or what, do, what corner do you think needs to be fixed and the citizens can put pins in there and give their comments. Uh, there's also the ability, there's, there's multiple different ways for input and surveys on this so we can create surveys and again I'll show you in a minute how that works. Uh, the citizens can sign up and subscribe to this and they can, there's, there's different things they can customize to it so they can determine what they actually want to. And it will also give us statistics on the back end. So we can look and see like what topics are blowing up, what are people talking about, what are people responding to most, what tools do people seem to be using and that is how we can sort of refine how well this engagement software is working. I think most importantly one of the things it'll do is it'll make it important, it'll help community members that might not otherwise come to a public hearing, whether they're just not, they just don't want to come to a public hearing or maybe because of their job situation or child care or physical constraints, they'll be able to participate through this public engagement software. And again, we've researched it and it's, it's being used all over the country, but a few just, you know, Bozeman, Missoula, Belgrade, and Boise right now are all using this. So here are some links. Let's see if this works. Uh, Okay, so let's see if you can see this. I just, I have two screens happening here, so I'm trying to, oh, it does work, okay. So here is the Bozeman uh, development update. And so you can see there's a subscribe box on the right, and then there's just kind of your typical reading about what it is. There's a project timeline down here. Uh, there's, an if, there's a box here that talks about feedback. Let me see if I can see my pointer, because I'm doing it directly on here. There's a Code Connect tab, 
And this tab is the one that, that talks about upcoming uh, meetings. There's a questions tab, and then there's this one, which I think is really super helpful. And this is where you can see some of the forums where citizens are posting their ideas or their thoughts, and then there's any number of responses. And on the right, you can sort of see what kind of materials are up there. Um, there's comments about what are zoning. I'm going to run you through a, a couple of these. Let's see here. I can see this. Now, I'll just open the next one. Uh, so this is another Bozeman project. This is the Fowler Avenue project. Um, one of the things about this is they, we originally were trying to look at seeing if we could get this done for just this project and Granicus or Engagement HQ only offers this for, for uh, multiple projects. It's called their basic license. So the city is looking at whether there might be some other projects or some other departments that could, could, that could use this as well. Uh, you have the ability to have up to 10 projects on this. Uh, I linked to this one, first of all, just because, again, you can see all the different comments and all the different discussion. These are comments, input, and suggestions from the community. Uh, you can see the, all the videos that are linked down here. There are, it, it has the ability, there's up at the top, I believe, somewhere, yeah. So you can see, like, the, the little icons for Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, where uh, citizens can actually share this on their websites. Uh, again, you can get registered. There's a part here that says who is listening, and that shows you who are the people that are actually reading this and letting you know, you know are, and are involved with this project. And then here is a, uh, a map that they put up, and I think they have a widget here. I think they're using this map widget. So if I can scroll down here, let's see if I can do that. So there, it's, it's not, they've already closed it, but basically the, the citizens will have the ability to put pins on here, and then in the pins, they can make comments on pretty much anything. And there's, there's one more that I have here, and I just thought this would be super helpful because this is Missoula's, and what Missoula has done is they have, this is their, it's called Engage Missoula, and then all of these are different projects through Missoula. So they're, they're using this same software for multiple different things. And if I was to click one of these view projects, then all of the functionality that I just showed you would be available for each individual project. So, so at present, it's going to be just us using this, we hope, for the growth policy. Um, it certainly could grow, uh, I think, as, as some of the departments start seeing how this works and there'll be training involved. This is one of the things that, that we're asking you to look at tonight, Planning Board, is you know, certainly we wanted to make sure that you were acceptable to this and this was something that you would like to see uh, before we moved forward with it. Now the bigger question is, can I get back to the PowerPoint presentation? Oh, I did, excellent. Okay, and then the, the last thing we want to, so there's three things we want to talk about tonight. We want to talk about the growth policy, we want to talk about the website that we showed you, and the last one is some branding artwork. Uh, we had talked about whether or not we could have a contest for logos and see who could get involved. And it was somewhat complicated, but there was actually a recommendation about a local artist. And this actually came before the name of the plan. And this local artist, you may see these, there's, there's uh, decals and stickers around town of these, these goggles. Uh, at, at first, we, we weren't really sure how this was going to work, but when it ended up being that the plan is called Vision Whitefish 45, we thought, wow, that's a pretty good idea. And we've already talked to the artist, and she is willing to do a custom goggle that would, that would have, like, show the city or the main street in the background that would kind of capture that vision whitefish. Uh, so, so right now, that, that's one of the things that we're looking at. We wanted to see if the planning board was interested in moving forward with this, having actually this professional artwork, uh, whether they wanted to try to have some kind of contest or if there was some other kind of ideas that the planning board wanted to suggest. So, recommendations. First of all, we recommend that the planning board discuss this public engagement plan and support us moving forward with it or suggest how it could be revised in order to gain your support. Uh, we recommend that the planning board offer their support for staff to move forward and sign the contract with this vendor for the new engagement HQ website. It would take a couple of months to get it developed. Um, finally, staff recommends that the planning board offer their input regarding whether or not the local artist should be retained to do the cover of this growth policy 
or whether you would look at having some other method to ha have that done. And with that, I would stand for questions or comments, Mr. Chair. Okay, thanks, Alan. Uh, questions or comments for Alan at this time? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in favor of a, uh, if not a contest, just a accepting submissions for a uh, piece of artwork. Just, you know, this girl happened to be handy and had already done something, but uh, we have a lot of talented people around here, right, the high school. And uh, I think if we did an outreach to perhaps the high school, even Columbia Falls or Kalispell, <laughs> I don't know how willing they would be to try and promote Whitefish, but uh, at least Whitefish High School and the middle school, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a contest, just accepting submissions. And then pick it. So we'd have to vote on it like we voted on the name for the... Uh... <laughs> for the, for the yeah, growth I guess we'd have to, we'd I, I kind of like that idea too, better than the word retainer, rather than retaining yeah. somebody specific. I mean, I they too. should be doing it for the exposure, possibly. Yeah, yeah. I agree uh, with that. Yeah. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Uh, instead of re retaining somebody, you know, let's try to avoid the cost and maybe make it a contest, or you know, they're going to get the exposure anyway. If they're an artist, um, we can maybe let them have the exposure rather than. A uh, cost associated with it. It's also a good way to kick off the entire program. I mean, it can check a lot of boxes at virtually, you know, minimal yeah. expense. And so we, that's something that I would say we ought to get on it right away because okay. we're nearing the end of right. the school year, and those kids out there have just, you know, <laughs> well, they're not really going to be paying attention to uh, artwork come summertime, probably. Some maybe, but. Uh, you know, an article in the paper, in the pilot, not next week, but the week after, or something like that, just saying, city's looking for a, uh, a picture or something. Sure. Just, just as a matter of process, let's maybe since we're talking about this item, there's three recommendations that yeah. um, that Alan would like to move forward with at this point. So let's maybe we can kind of tick these off in order. So I'm, what I'm hearing is that we'd rather open it up rather than get than retain someone to do the art for us. Okay. Do we have any idea what it would cost, Alan, for, for her to do the art for, artwork for us? Yeah, I think um, there was two different prices. I think it was like 3500 bucks. It's this original oil painting. She's a Whitefish High School graduate artist that's now um, had a lot of her work in different local galleries and something like that. But we would end up with, you know, a piece of artwork that we could, you know, hang in City Hall or whatever that would be you know, basically that design as we commission it. So she basically paints it digitally in oil or in oil and then imports it digitally um, and modifies it. But it starts with an oil painting. So at the end of it, we have the choice of just getting the digital art, which would be cheaper, or ending up with, you know, that commissioned oil painting at the end of it that we could, you know, Ooh, utilize as something. But if we that was just one of the options. We just thought we'd bring okay. it to you guys as an idea. Sure. Uh, Wendy kind of came up with that. She's a fan of that artist, and since you know ski goggle thing and it's vision whitefish, kind of seemed like it might be an idea to it's, consider. I don't think anybody's saying it's a bad idea. I think it's more like why why are we going to pay somebody to do this? I think is more the the, the bigger issue. I mean, it would be a nice it would be nice. The, um, the other question comes up is if we're paying her, uh, who has the rights of ownership to the you would, at the end of the day, artwork, the city the would have artwork. the right of ownership yeah, of the artwork to, to reproduce yeah. it with stickers and T-shirts or whatever other stuff that we want to do. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, how does art pertain to land use? I mean, we're here for land use. Okay. Right. Right. Well, sometimes, sometimes we like to make it a little more exciting, Scott. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, not that land use doesn't get my juices flowing, but um, sometimes it's nice to to have some. To, to spice it up a little bit. Um, and since we, well, anybody else have anything to say on that? Anybody from the public want to come up and speak on the on this issue, whether or not we should retain someone to do the artwork for us? We put the picture back up there, Alan, can you do that? Quick, you don't have to if it's going to be a, a giant hassle, but I think everybody saw a decent picture of it. Does anybody want to come up and speak about that? I can make it work. Okay whether we should retain somebody or open it up as a competition or uh, just ask for submissions. Hi. You would Hello. Speak Hi. your name and address into the mic. Uh, Amy Boring, 78 Montana Avenue, Whitefish. Um, as an artist, the 
copyright most likely stays with the artist unless you pay for it, which is typically extra, just from my experience in the field. I think you should open it up. I think there's a lot of really great artists. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted yeah. to fill you in on that. Thanks, Amy. Anybody else want to speak about whether we sh should open this up? Okay. Well, <clears throat> what I've heard is that we would move forward with a, an open competition. I don't know that that precludes having um, this artist submit something. Uh, so, and I don't know if it's going to be a, something we would pay for either. That's kind of the lingering question in my mind. Would it be a competition or somebody wins and, and the, 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 okay. Yeah, I mean, if it's a student, it would be kind of interesting to give them a $500 scholarship or something like that. Um, if, if we leave it with the schools, uh, if it's open to any artist, then I think that they're doing it for the exposure, maybe. Um, I don't know. We might not get any submissions if that's the case. Do we have any sense from the high school whether this would go over well? And we haven't reached out to the high school yet. Okay. We were first figuring out what we were going to do with this. We okay. didn't want to decide we were going to go with this art and then right, talk to the high school and then okay. say, oh, never mind. Okay. Uh, and do we have to have – we don't need the art before – no, well, I mean, it could, it could ha yeah, sure, we could, I mean, you know, we're working on the growth policy. I have the feeling this is not going to be streaming along at light speed. So, um, yeah, we can certainly have the artwork in the fall of next year or during the beginning of the season. Okay. In fact, right. more than likely, because I'll be reaching out to the teachers anyway, and we're not going to be able to talk to the, to the classes, I would think, this year. But we'd be, again, hoping there could be some kind of project involving this growth policy with the, with the government class, maybe, or the political science class. Okay. All right. So does that give you enough direction? Do we need a formal vote? I don't think this? you need a vote. I mean, it's okay. a work session, so yeah. I'm, hearing, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Well, sometimes we vote, sometimes we don't. Um, okay. Uh, so the next, the next uh, so you got the, you got the gist there. Yes, sir. Okay. And then the next one was uh, recommending um, discuss the draft engagement plan and support staff moving forward as described in the plan. Uh, to be, should it be revised to gain planning board support? So the that's kind of the overall plan, correct? That you're that you're wanting us to. That's the plan for the plan, basically. Okay. But before we even want to, I know we like the plan. But before we even started the growth policy, we wanted to make sure we had a very clear roadmap of how the public would be involved, what the processes would be, when they'd be able to do it. We were trying to be as clear as possible. Okay. Uh, from me, I didn't see anything left out. It seemed like the. You're reaching out as, in as many ways as possible, uh, including social media. Dave is whispering in my ear. Uh, I probably should have given him the glory since he reminded me. But actually, uh, House Bill 38, 382, um, Senate Bill 382 now, yeah. is actually going to require. So, so we're kind of ahead of it because um, this wasn't required before. In fact, under the present statute, all you have to do for a growth policy is have one hearing with the planning board. Um, but the statute now is actually going to require a growth policy prior to a, a, a oh, sorry, my, my bad, a require a, a public engagement plan prior to a growth policy. Okay. Well, good. So, so we're, we're ahead, ahead of the curve. Game. We can tell them we did it first. We, we usually are. Uh, but, uh, okay, so is there anything you guys would like to add to the plan? My only suggestion would be um, television advertising. Um, I, I'm not certain, but I know that uh, radio and things like that, they have to provide a certain amount of free time. And if we were to put an announcement forward to the uh, network affiliates in uh, both Kalispell and Missoula, that's an additional way to get the word out. You never can tell what the people are going to be watching. I would look to Dave and Wendy, who have been here a whole lot longer than me in the Flathead Valley, about how that could or would work. TV or radio? So maybe you could add something in there. I, I, I would hate to see us pay for, for that kind of time. I, I, I could certainly, I mean, I could certainly add it to the plan that we will investigate that option. Okay. I can't promise that I'll be on the TV and nobody wants to see that anyway, but I'll see if I can investigate that option. 
I believe it's required that public service yeah, announcements public service are announcements. free. Yeah. They're free. Okay. So we'll look into uh, that kind of earned advertising. Anything else that you guys would like to see in the plan, the engagement plan? Uh, no, that's the next one, whether we're going to move forward with the, with the website, I think. Yeah, the vendor developed public engagement plan. I, I think that if you look at many of the other PEPs, um, you're going to find this one is at least as thorough, if not more thorough. Yeah. We, we've spent a lot of time on this. Okay. All right. Um, so um, what I'm hearing from us is that uh, we're happy with this plan. Anybody like to speak on the engagement plan? Come on up and just state your name and address for the record. If there's something else you'd like to see in there, there's part of it you're confused about, just let us know what you want. Hi, everybody. My name is Leonette Galaz. Uh, address is 265 Colorado Avenue, apartment D4. Um, I just wanted to speak up a little bit uh, as a community member and as a community organizer. Um, I'm curious how the planning board um, plans to engage individuals who've been pushed out of the city of Whitefish over the past like 10, 15, 20 years. Um, I hear their stories a lot. Uh, they're still here in the valley. Many of them have moved out of the state or across the state. And so I wonder how their voice or input gets involved in the city's growth plan, um, just because there's opportunities for those people to be able to move back, depending on what the plans are. Thanks, Leonette. Thank you. Richard? <laughs> Good evening, uh, Richard Hildner, 104 Fifth Street, Whitefish. Um, thanks for the opportunity to comment on the Draft Growth Policy Public Engagement Plan, or PEP. Um, I'm speaking for myself as well as a member of the Board of Flathead Families for Responsible Growth. Uh, before I get into specifics, I'd like to begin with a couple of general comments. And first of all, I appreciate the organization and the easily accessible references to data and source material that were provided. Appreciate that. I'm a little concerned about the use of aspirational language, uh, such as the frequent use of may and intends. Uh, good intentions may, in some cases, be insufficient to meet the goals of this plan. Uh, and it's just one of those cautionary uh, flags for me. It's, um, I used to be a soccer ref. It's a yellow card, not a red card, when I look at things like that kind of language. Um, In-person public engagement is critical uh, to the success, and so I think that that has to be uh, all of the potential ways to engage the public uh, need to be um, abundantly uh, looked at and uh, uh, followed up with. I encourage uh, you to look forward uh, to the effects of, as, and I don't see this really in the, in the plan, uh, the effects of climate change on the distribution of uh, growth uh, in Whitefish. Uh, we're a fire-prone community entirely within the defined wildland urban interface, or WUI, uh, and the area north of the viaduct, viaduct will become even more vulnerable to wildfire over the next 20 years. I think that that's uh, irre irrefutable, uh, and I say that just from my 17 years of experience in wildland fire management. Uh, now, um, is the time to put a concentrated effort into engaging the younger demographic in the growth policy, particularly those in the 25 to 45 year age group. Um, I've said it before, I'm probably worn out the uh, phrase, but uh, 20 years from now I will um, be reaching my expiration date. And, uh, but it's those kids, the young people, that I think uh, are the ones that we really, really need to, uh, to engage. A um, couple of specifics, uh, it's the teacher in me that caused me to uh, res uh, respond to page two, line six, um, uh, just to change or to of, <laughs> it's just a typo, uh, but it's just that I read these things. Uh, recognizing that this is a draft, uh, now is a good time to expand the list of civic organizations to, in to include more youth groups, if we can find them and who they are. And it's been suggested to me as well uh, that 
There are lots of book groups in this community and uh, reach out to book groups as a potential uh, for information. Um, page seven, visioning workshops. Uh, again, are critical elements and, uh, and a phase of the process. Um, and the question is, well, how much of this and will it be online, in person, or a combination of the two? And I think that that is worth your discussion uh, as you talk about how this is going to play out and, and how the plan is, is further developed. Um, the first town, page eight, the first town hall is an extremely important event and every effort should be made to maximize attendance. And of course, as Alan pointed out, we don't know when that's going to be yet or what it's going to look like, but uh, I, I think that that first one really sets the tone for what's going to happen uh, in the future. And then on page 10, the kickoff meeting, um, I'm uncertain where it's referenced and what is the, the, what are the times and date for this. Um, and is this the same as the town hall meeting, uh, the kickoff in the town hall meeting? Uh, that was not clear. Um, and on pages uh, 12 through 15, there looks to be an over-reliance on the engagement website that's being discussed as something to be purchased by the city. The examples where the engagement software is in use are for larger cities such as Bozeman at 54,500 plus. Uh, Missoula at 74.8, and uh, Boise at uh, 237,400 plus um, citizens. Uh, I hope that the software is ta uh, tailorable to smaller cities such as ours, and we can tweak that as we go along. Um, and then, uh, speaking for myself and for FFRG, we look forward to working with the city and planning board as we develop guidance for the future of whitefish and the ability to keep the public in public engagement. Thanks, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to being part of this. I, I truly am. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Anybody else wish to speak on the engagement plan? Okay. Uh, this doesn't preclude your being able to speak on it, but we're just kind of at that point in the meeting. Hi again. Amy, 78 Montana Avenue. Um, I have a lot of experience in marketing and print marketing and email marketing and websites and things. Um, I'm curious what the current engagement is for the other cities and what the demographics are. There. You mean like statistical yeah, engagement like with Missoula, their website? Yeah, like Missoula, like how many people are using it, how many people are commenting on it, can you comment anonymously? Can you ask private questions versus public questions, that kind of thing. Um, and then mailers, acquiring a list, pricey, mailing it, printing, that's all really pricey. If you could target it to specifically people over maybe 55 or 60, and then target social media at the younger demographics, 18 to 55, maybe. Um, yeah, I guess that's it, just kind of bullet points to keep your eye on marketing-wise. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. Don't be shy. You can come up. It's not. I know Giuseppe it's Caltabiano, 2075 Lion Mountain Loop Road. I just, uh, you triggered my uh, memory um, that uh, list, and actually not expensive, the county for $5 will provide an, uh, an Excel spreadsheet with all the registered voters uh, within city limits, if not countywide. And in those records, uh, there are email addresses, telephone numbers, <coughs> as well as birthdays. So it's, it would be very, very easy to do um, 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 a geographical and uh, um, social uh, logical kind of analysis and sending emails if we want to. And the other thing I wanted to say was uh, the, when we worked at the growth policy in 2007, which means we started working at least in 2005 or six, if I remember well. Um, if anybody has any institutional memory of what worked well versus what didn't work well, uh, absolutely, the times are change, have changed, but still some of the principles stay the same. So if anybody could dig up some of those processes and see, oh, these people said they wanted a viaduct, a bypass. Oh, we didn't do it. That didn't work very well or something to that effect. Thank you. 
Thanks, Giuseppe. Here comes the person who probably has the most institutional knowledge of yeah, that I, process. I, I think that was my cue. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm Bob Horn, 151 Wedgwood Lane in Whitefish. And um, yes, I'm the culprit of the 2007-2008 plan. Um, I reviewed the, um, uh, the public engagement plan uh, last week. And it was last week, I think, Alan, I, I wrote Alan a page of notes and comments, and I just think they did a really good job of putting this together and um, looking at uh, different ways to, um, uh, to, en to engage people. Um, I found out a long time ago that um, every community is different, and you need to engage the public in a way that fits the culture and values of that community. And just very quickly, uh, in the 90s, I worked on the Jackson, Teton County, Wyoming comp plan, and we had people just at the drop of a hat, 100 people would come to the high school on a beautiful summer evening when they could be out fishing or hiking or something to talk about growth in the valley. Next thing I know, I'm in Great Falls, totally different community. You can't get them to come anywhere, but they valued their organizations and they had a neighborhood council system. So we used that neighborhood council to reach out to them. We spoke to the groups. We spoke to the Missouri fly fishers. We spoke to the mothers of twins. We spoke to every organization we could, again, because that community valued them. But these guys have pretty much covered the gamut and I, 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 I like what I see. Um, as for what worked in the best things that we did, um, from like 2007 until adoption in 2008. I think those have already been touched on. Richard touched on it very heavily. That is one-on-one, -on -one, neighborhood by neighborhood. Uh, put it on the board. People love to make a suggestion and see it go right on a board, okay? I know that's old fashioned, but magic, there's nothing like magic markers and flip chart to make somebody <laughs> see that they've been heard. Um, Richard says something about engage, even engaging people is at 25 to 45. I would go younger, and the reason I would go younger is because um, I was uh, a consultant for Anaconda Deer Lodge County for 10 years, and I did their growth policy plus an update, and um, I, I got a call from an advanced placement government teacher, oh, come and talk to my class, so I decided to do a a mini visioning session because you have a, a period of it's not very much time. I learned a lot. I mean, kids would come out and say, I can't wait to get the hell out of this town. Okay. I don't anticipate that here, but I mean, in that town and the situation they were in back then, it was, it, it was kind of, a, it was kind of jarring to, to, to hear that, that attitude and, and what the, the young people that we look to is the, they look to as the future of the community, what they actually thought about the town. Again, I don't expect that reaction here, but I'd recommend uh, whether it's a project or not, at, at least engaging the high school level uh, in, in that in a similar manner. Um, other than that, like I said, I've already shared my thoughts with uh, uh, with Alan, and um, I I think they're doing a great job. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Anybody else? Yeah, come on up. I'm Carolyn Pittman. I live at One Tides Way, Whitefish. Um, as someone who just got a tutorial in Instagram today, I think it's really important that we connect with everybody in the community. Um, I think the website's a wonderful idea. I think that it will address um, the issues for many people, but it won't for everybody. And I think it's just really important to remember that there is a segment of the, co of the community that doesn't even use the internet, um, and they will want to be involved. And I also think that having community meetings and small meetings, people are much more inclined to give opinions, to give their feelings. There's an interaction. There's not much interaction when you're writing your opinion on a page on the internet. So. 
Um, I do know how to use Instagram now, so I think that's probably um, one other area that we should be using to put the word out, especially for those under my age. But um, I just think it's really important to try to think of all segments of our community and try to get the most out of it so that you don't have people coming 10 years from now and saying, well, I didn't know anything about it. Where was I? Why is this happening? Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. I was thinking about Instagram while they were just talking about Facebook, but I didn't want to show my ignorance about how to use it, so, um, okay. Uh, well, do you, what do we want to talk about? Any back that came up first. Um, Leonette? I don't think it was addressed, and it was... Uh, Engaging, engaging people from outside the community. Yeah, that's it. Out. Um, so a public hearing, the way I understand it, is open to anybody no matter where you live. So if they're outside Whitefish City Limits or if they're in Bozeman or wherever, they're still able to participate in the community process with a public hearing. All right, that's how I understand it. Is that correct? Yeah. So there you go. They're not excluded. They're, they're welcome to join in the process. I think the question is more of how are we reaching out to them uh, to just tell them, hey, we're updating our growth policy. We're trying to do that. Just a sec. Um, I, I, I want to address the idea that um, although on pages 12 through, and correct me if I'm wrong, Alan, but it, on pages 12 through 15, engagement website does appear at the top of every of one of the columns. So it does, it makes, I think it gives it the flavor that we're kind of rely super heavily on that, but I don't think that that is going to be the case. It's, it's just one of the tools that we're going to use, right? That is correct. Um, if you actually look in the table, especially in the early on, we, we, we plan to, first of all, hold a town hall, which would be the same as the kickoff. It would be a kickoff and it would be the uh, existing conditions and just kind of a here we are, welcome. Um, we, we plan to have multiple visioning sessions uh, with the public individually. Um, there, there, we do plan to have open houses whenever, so we'll have the visioning sessions, we'll write drafts of the plans, we'll have open houses to present the plans. Uh, as far as reaching out, it's, it's tough uh, to reach out to the general community, but I think that some of the comments about um, public service announcements and maybe TV, um, again, trying to use some of the Facebook geo-targeting to get people in the area could certainly help. Um, I would suggest that, you know, when we, when we get to that stage, we, we could add something like when we reach out to certain people, we could say, if you know somebody who's been forced out of town, please share this with them. Uh, uh, that maybe we could find a place where that language would fit into the, the public engagement plan. And I guess the last one I just wanted to mention to Mr. Hildner. Um, so there is going to be a section on, envir on env environment. Uh, we do plan on working with the Climate Action Committee. So they're going to be one of the advisory committees. It's, and it's actually listed in the plan, um, maybe not super clear. Uh, but the Climate Action Committee, they're very well aware and super excited about being involved. So the, the impacts of, of climate change are definitely going to be something that we're going to work on here. It's interesting because um, Bob was pretty reaching in 2007. There was talk about climate change and how we could address that. And we're talking 17 years ago. So, yeah, we, we're, we're going to hit that. Very well aware of that. Uh, and the other thing I would say is that I think we need to have some language in here that says we're going to be flexible. Like, Bob's comments sort of uh, peaked in my mind that, you know, if we hold a big uh, public event and only 12 people show up or we don't get the kind of engagement we want, then we need to re reassess what we focus on, whether we go to all the small clubs and really express and get those engaged. I think we need, there's a certain amount of outreach we need to do there, but if we have a thousand people show up at our first meeting, uh, and people still continue to show up as we have public hearings or um, events, public events, then, you know, those, those become, you know, if we have, if we get good engagement from just our general meetings, then we need to, we, we don't have to be as specific with the smaller groups. But if we don't, then we have to be flexible and really start to try to reach out to the, to the smaller groups. And definitely, it's much easier. I, to get up, to sit around a table and talk about what you see as issues with our growth or whatever than it is to even come up and stand at the microphone in this setting. So um, the smaller, the more opportunities we have for small kinds of um, 
meetings would be great. And with that, I think um, we need to kind of decide. Are we, we're all okay with the PEP as it is, with the comments that we made. Does anybody else want to see anything else added in here? We're going to run out of time is my concern. Yeah. No, my only consideration is just I think that the uh, younger people, we need to start with high school and up from there because uh, so often around here, you go to high school, go away to college, go away, get a job, Five, ten years later, they move back and say, what? <laughs> okay. Yep. My thought was reach out to student council um, or reach out to whoever the advisor is for student council and also the government teacher on that one. Uh, and then the last, thing, the last thing we need to decide on is uh, should we move forward with the website? <laughs> That's the only comment I had, and I thought maybe we'd get to it later. I don't know the proper timing, but um, the, the topic of comments was brought up, and if they're public or private, um, I think they need to have some sort of regulation because people tend to get snarky on some of these forums. And uh, maybe, you know, we've got to watch out, make sure there's not, uh, you know, personal attacks on people or just negative statements. <laughs> and that needs to be monitored somehow. We're not gonna, it's not going to be a free for all, is well, it, Alan? 100% right. <laughs> agree with you for being someone that's been land based on Facebook. Um, so there's a couple of other things. First of all, I'll, me or whoever will still be a moderator of the site. So I can. You know, I can read the comments and see how ugly they're getting. Um, we have the ability to quarantine the comments, but they're still there. So if someone in the future said, you never saw my comments, we can say, well, yeah, they are. Also, uh, they do have bots that will check the website and they'll flag what could be inappropriate content. So they'll, it'll give you an alert and say, somebody dropped the F-bomb. You might want to check that. And I can go back and look and see if it's appropriate. So yeah. Tr trust me, um, I go on the 406 Facebook page and boy can that one go south. Um, and just from, I'd like to see a more of a financial plan for what this is going to cost us as well. As far as the website? Yeah. Well, I can give you, I, I didn't know if Dave wanted me to, to give those numbers, but I can tell you the numbers. I, I'll, I'll uh, not exact down to the dollar, but basically um, there was a lot of negotiation, but the first year is $1,800 for the training and the setup, and 35, or sorry, the, the total cost for the first year is $5,900, and that includes, and I can actually pull up the inventory if you want the actual numbers, but basically like $5,700 for the first year for setup information and to get it going. Um, each, the, we right now have told them three years. Uh, each year after that is roughly $6,500. Uh, that will give the ability for 10 different projects. So as we move forward, if the website starts looking very effective and other departments like it, then uh, I, I will be trained in it and there's the ability to train three other people as administrators. So me or anybody else can, can bring other departments into it as well. So $5,700 first year, roughly $6,800 each year after that. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, Recommendations for uh, to move forward with this. We have about five minutes left. I recommend approval of it. Okay. Anybody from the public want to speak on this really quick? We just have a couple minutes left. Hey, Nathan Dugan, 937. Kalispell Avenue, I'm the president of Shelter WF. Um, did want to speak on this website part specifically. Um, I think that definitely is something that needs to be moved forward. Um, it's, as Alan spoke about, an adjunct to the rest of the other public engagement, um, a much easier way for people to engage. And I'm sure that there's a lot more to it than just forums. I'm sure that they can have polls and, and all kinds of cool stuff on there. Um, what I want to start talking about now is uh, something I asked Alan about yesterday in our Climate Action Plan Committee meeting. And that is whether the website has the ability to collect demographic information, and it does. Um, and that's the most important piece of this whole process. Um, so I want to push back a little bit on, on something that you said earlier, Steve, um, about if a thousand people show up to the first meeting, that's great. Maybe we don't have to reach out to these other groups as much. Well, I didn't it, mean it quite like that. It came across that way, but that's not really how I meant it. No, no. Um, I'm not. I, I, uh, uh, not trying to throw you under the bus or anything. So just in general, um, if a thousand people show up to the first meeting, yeah, that's great. Um, in, in my opinion, the opinion of my organization, it matters who those people are. 
Um, if there are a thousand people that aren't representative of the entire community, then that is maybe not the most democratic process and maybe not the most valuable information. And so um, I would like to see, if the website is uh, pursued here, the ability for us to collect demographic information on age, income, those can be ranges, you don't have to give specifics. Um, whether people are homeowners, renters, their gender, race, ethnicity, the industry that they're employed in, um, so that we can make sure that we're actually talking to people that are employed downtown and wherever else um, people work in the town. Um, and then maybe even their zip code to kind of get on the, the subject that was talked about a little bit earlier. So um, we're going to try our hardest as an organization to make sure that it's pretty representative and a lot of people that maybe don't show up to this sort of thing um, come out, but that is a difficult task. I think the website makes it easier for sure, um, but I think that we need to be a little bit more academic about it and we didn't know where those opinions are coming from. Are they coming from a subsection of our community or are they representative of our whole community, which is really the goal here. Thanks. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, and we're going to have to cut it off here and kind of give our consent or not towards uh, moving forward with the website. Sorry, Mary, we're out of time because we have to start the pub we have to start the meeting in just a minute. Okay. So, recommendation about moving forward with the website. Yes. Any objection to it? Okay. Do you have your got your what you need? Alan, okay, and I, yes, I would like you to, the demographic information I think is very important actually. I am, okay. Account, um, we, can, we can put that into the account information, you know, whether or not they tell us is another thing, but we can certainly make that when you sign up, it can answer some demographic questions so that we can control all that information. Okay, perfect. I can't make them tell me, but they might want to help. Maybe maybe we can. I don't. We don't. Maybe we don't know yet exactly how what what it requires. Um, okay. So you got your marching orders on that as well. Okay. Anything else you need from us for the work session? Okay. We will call. Uh, I will adjourn the work session, and let's take a one minute. Uh, well, we have 49 seconds until um, the general meeting starts. Let's take a five minute break, and we'll start a couple minutes late.